As University of Maryland students, we have all been to McKeldin Library at one time or another. Located atop the mall, the seventh floor library has a bunch of amenities that students use on a day-to-day -day basis. McKeldin is used for things such as group projects, individual studying, or class meetings. They even have a coffee shop called Footnotes that students could go to if they are hungry. However, one thing blatantly obvious about McKeldin is how crowded it always is. Whether you're looking to use a computer, sit at a desk, or find a study room, you are often out of luck. I could tell you from personal experience that I have spent more than 30 minutes walking the halls of McKeldin trying to locate a place to study. The craziest part about that is that that's happened on more than one occasion. While McKeldin offers many amenities and services, it is evident that there is a lack of space in the building. I prefer to study in my room because whenever I go to McKeldin, there's never any spots there and it's really frustrating. Studying in McKeldin is the worst. Of this problem, we conducted interviews, handed out surveys, and went to different floors of McKeldin to look at the situation firsthand. We observed that the second floor is the most crowded, and as Zach mentioned before, students have to walk around a few times before finding a spot. Also, another unusual thing we saw was that most of the rooms on second floor were reserved for graduate students, and undergraduate had to form groups in order to sign up for the available rooms. For students who like to study without noise, floors 3, 4, and 5 were the best options. But these floors did not permit group work. Another option for students was to book a study carol, but from our observation, we saw that carols were reserved for faculty and PhD students for a full semester at a time. After looking at the situation, we realized that the library is missing space for effective learning and the noise level on certain floors disrupt the overall studying. When we asked people about which library they used the most, 76% said McKeldin. This could be because McKeldin is the main library in South Campus and many BSOS and business majors go there. We also so I prefer to study on the sixth floor of the library because there's less people up there and it's really quiet and you can spread out all your study materials and papers and have lots of room to study usually. Um, and I like to study in a quiet environment, um, just a little bit of music maybe, and yeah. We also asked students which floor they prefer to study on. 44% said second, followed by 21% saying first. This greatly shows the need for more floors which permit group studying and allow students to engage with each other. This could be seen from the study library as place, rethinking roles, rethinking space, where the researchers talked about how li libraries are collaborative, interactive, and a source of principle building on campus. The writers feel that the variety and distinct functions and features could enhance the excitement and adventure of the academic experience, foster a sense of community, and advance the institution into the future. Later, when we asked students whether it is difficult to find a spot, in order to confirm our observation, 80% said yes and complain about the seating arrangements on different floors. Floor 2 has tables really close together, while four, 3 and 4 have a lot of excess space and shelves taking up most of the floor. This analysis greatly shows the extent to which lack of space is affecting students in their day-to-day -day studying at McKeldin and the need for an environment where a student can truly experience and benefit from the centrality of the intellectual community. When trying to implement this change in McKeldin Library, we would take the action research approach. Our team acted as the change agent and conducted research by collecting information on common problems and concerns that students experience when using McKeldin. After interviewing many students around campus, we diagnosed a mutual issue of people being frustrated with the inability to find a seat. With this unanimous reaction to our questions, we analyzed the rationale behind individuals' responses and attributed the student's aggravation to the layout and environment in the library. Most of the people interviewed mentioned that they favor quiet and spacious study environments, which are characteristics rarely found in McKeldin. 
In order to meet the needs and concerns of the students, we realized that the library needed to add additional seating on most of its floors by taking out the unused bookshelves as they are preoccupying a large amount of space. In a study conducted at Purdue University, it was found that individual study spaces and spaces for collaboration and teamwork encourage students to study. Additionally, the research concluded that quiet and peaceful environments, good library furniture, and a pleasant ambiance contributed to students' views on positive features of library space. With this information in mind, our group designed potential floor plans for the layout by planning an effective seating arrangement. This plan consisted of more open and accessible study areas and added mobile study desks, chairs, and tables. Furthermore, for the third step of the action research process, our team, with the backing of student support, would have to provide feedback to employees and management within the library in order to bring about awareness of this problem. By discussing the problems caused by the lack of seating, with staff working closely with the organization of McKeldin, we would be able to voice the opinions and dissatisfaction of the student body. The projected proposal would highlight the various key features which would, which would be needed to take into consideration, such as design-related strategies to create quiet spaces and introduction of new library furniture. With the help of top-level management, the plans of changing the floor layouts would be set into action. If the change is implemented, the library would be able to conduct ongoing evaluations of students' library use and learning needs. When reflecting on the execution, management would be able to identify areas of strengths and weaknesses while making informed and evidence-based decisions about future improvements to McKeldin. Using the action research process is advantageous because it focuses on the problems students are facing rather than immediately starting with a solution. In addition, because management close to the source of the problem would be involved and engaged in the process to implement this transformation, we would, be, we would face less resistance to the change. However, there may be some drawbacks when using this approach, as we would have to depend on the employees to bring about this change, and we would have to make additional efforts to ensure that they stay motivated and follow through to bring about some solution to the problem. If they did not pursue the plan, no change would be... The potential sources of resistance that we would meet would come from the UMD Board of Trustees, which oversees finances and advises the president on where to spend money, large donors to the school who may want their money to go elsewhere and ensure that it's not going towards our specific project, and the Board of Regents, which oversees the system's academic, administrative, and financial operations. So for our solutions, we would want to have a completed proposal to show legitimacy and also that the project has been fully planned. This proposal would include a reasonable financial budget, design layouts, and the benefits of creating these changes. We would also need to get in touch with, this, with the right people. Talking to the potential sources of resistance and showing them our business plan could help to mitigate their opposition of our project and actually gain their support instead. Also, there is a student on the Board of Regents who could advocate for us that McKeldin could use improvement. Having President Lowe, any of his vice presidents, and or his assistant president supporting us would definitely help us as well. This project also needs support from the student body, maybe through petitions or a demonstration on McKeldin Mall. When higher up see that it's something that a lot of students are passionate about, they will feel way more compelled to make a change. And of course, we would need proper leadership on the project as well, which will be talked about in depth in the next two slides. Firstly, we would need a singular leader whose characteristics will be described momentarily to take the forefront of the execution team to make sure that everyone knew what tasks they were assigned and could carry them out. Secondly, we would need the execution team to carry out the leader's vision because, of course, no one person can do everything alone. As mentioned on the last slide, the student body's following and support is also essential as it gives our argument that McKelda needs more seating, more weight. As there are employees with power in some organizations, we would give students a decent amount of power as well so that they could voice the changes they wanted to see and would be more invested in participating in our project. In addition to all of these characteristics, the leader of the execution team should also be charismatic and engaging so that other people will want to get involved. The redesign of the McKeldin Library is, is really critical to the, to the university over time. I think we've had a good chance to talk about all the things that the library can be and needs to be for the academic success of the university.